Professor with the help with the help of the agriculture department. Is he The Minister for Agriculture, Rural and Maritime Development and Waterways Environment, the Honourable Dr. Mahendra Reddy. My name is Amirul Nisha Hussain and I'm the proud owner of 130 acres of freehold farmland here in Tugrara. It's a pleasure to be here this morning um, and uh, this is our first meeting in Sabusaru to launch uh, our commercial agriculture uh, program. Ladies and gentlemen, you must have heard me on the radio, you must have seen me on TV, you must have read in papers, uh, where I have clearly outlined our vision for agriculture. For far too long, we have treated agriculture ministry as a social welfare ministry. For far too long, we have treated agriculture as a ministry of social protection for rural dwellers. We have really undervalued agriculture's potential to be the backbone of the economy. We are now turning the ship towards this critical uh, objective of assisting our national interest. Our national interest is to get the country grow. Our national interest is to ensure that we develop. And in the growth process, in the growth process, we'll get everyone to participate. Now, in doing so, everyone will benefit. Everyone will benefit if the economy grows. Because we will want everyone to be engaged in the growth process. So that the trick of the trade is that when everyone is engaged in the growth process, then everyone will benefit from the growth, the returns from the growth. And the sector that is that has huge potential is agriculture sector. Agriculture sector is within our control. There's a sector like tourism, remittances, all these sectors are doing extremely well. All these sectors are very important for the country. <coughs> but these sectors are highly volatile. Tourism sector, remittances, these sectors are not in our control. These sectors are beyond our control. They are subject to external shocks. The volatility of income from these sectors will translate into volatility of income, national income, if we don't let other sectors be part of the growth and development process. All of you, if you have traveled around Fiji, you will see how we have really underutilized one of our most important natural capital, which is land. I have traveled widely throughout Fiji, right in the interior, in the Western Division, the Central Division, the Northern Division, and also in the Maritime area. And I've noted a large proportion of good quality arable land is now lying idle. And we need to utilize any capital which does not provide positive returns is a dead capital. And we are doing injustice to the country, to our national aspirations, to our national vision, to our national goal. We have to bring our national capital, our natural capital, into production process. No land will provide returns without us you know, uh, utilizing it. Some people think that you know, idle land will, will, will provide return. We're doing injustice to the country by not utilizing our natural capital, our natural resource to its full capacity. Ladies and gentlemen, we now are embarking on an era where we will go into big time large commercial agriculture in national interest. And I repeat, I continue to say that it is in national interest we must embark on commercial agriculture. Now, what is commercial agriculture? Commercial agriculture has certain attributes, key attributes. One is that we grow for the market. Most of it, if not all, almost all of it, if not all, is for the market. Number two is that our target is to create surplus, profit, generate surplus, generate profit. <laughs> Number three is that part of that surplus, we will save it, part we will use it for our own 
uh, you know, consumption, and part we will reinvest in the business. That's the trick of the trade. You know, seasoned businessmen, they will tell you that every year you'll have to reinvest part of the surplus so that you continue to expand. That's how economies expand, because the surplus created is reinvested at a micro level and the macro level. No country can grow and expand and develop if the surplus is not created. And number two, if the created surplus, part of it is not reinvested. That is the whole notion of surplus creation. You create surplus and part of it annually, you must reinvest in the business. And that's what we want. We want commercial agriculture. Not an agriculture which continuously depends on government handouts and government subsidies and government grant, because that agriculture cannot be sustained. We don't want to create dependent agriculture. We want to get break away from the shackles of dependent agriculture. We have for far too long poured government's money and treated agriculture as a welfare sector for rural dwellers. We have treated agriculture as a sector for social protection. Now we have done injustice to the country. We now have to move towards developing commercial agriculture. Of course, there will be obstacles, there are challenges. You know, I will briefly allude to it. The environmental challenges, the challenges of people's mindset, community's mindset, all these will have to tackle bit by bit, progressively. Ladies and gentlemen, the fourth attribute of commercial agriculture is that we are in a competitive market. Competition is important. It will get us to sharpen ourselves, you know, look for um, uh, ways of reducing cost, improving efficiency, both technical and allocative efficiency. Then only we can push the frontier. So if we support one Dalo farmer here, that doesn't mean we will not support another Dalo farmer in the neighborhood. There's room for everyone to grow. Let's not believe in a banyan tree model. You know, if those of you have seen a banyan tree, when a banyan tree grows, nothing else can grow around a banyan tree. We're not going to adopt a banyan tree model. Let's all grow together. There's room for everyone to grow. So, ladies and gentlemen, we want to now break the cycles of dependent agriculture and move towards commercial agriculture. And that's where our government assistance package will go. We do understand that there are people, there are families and households who are undertaking family farming run by family member for substance purpose. They're doing hobby farming, they're doing leisure farming, they're doing part-time farming. There's room for that. You can do that, we'll not bother you, you don't bother us. It's okay, we understand. You retired, you are born there, your house is there, emotionally tied to it. That's okay, you can do that. But we'll not pour in government money to prop up someone's hobby activity. We've done that for long. This is not a welfare ministry. This is an economic ministry. If you look at open up the budget estimate, you look at those ministries which are under social welfare, like social welfare, health, education, those ministries which fall under economic, and this agriculture is one of them. And that's how it will be treated from now onwards. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, a bit to promote commercial agriculture, will treat the commercial farmers, large scale commercial farmers, who want to build like a business entrepreneur, is our gold card farmers. It's our gold card farmers. We will treat them special. We will attend to them. We will provide them with advice immediately on one call. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said, commercial business means we don't come and pick up your breaking cost. Ask any shop owner here. They establish their shop. We didn't construct the, the infrastructure for them. We didn't buy them the groceries for them to sell. Neither do we want to share their revenue. We don't pick up your operating cost. We don't ask for you to share your total revenue with us. But we will pick up your 
one of the capital cost. And the package includes, we'll assist you in land clearing. We will provide you with machinery. It's much, much subsidized cost. We'll do drainage at our cost. We'll do land clearing. We'll assist you at a very subsidized cost in terms of plowing your land. Much, much, much subsidized cost. $28 an hour for plowing. We'll do that. One of will assist you in providing planting material. And you take off. And then you become our model farmer. And others will learn from you. And if possible, you can assist other farmers as well. You are our special farmers. You are our gold card farmers. And we will give you a gold card status in terms of service. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the era we're moving to in national interest. And I really, really uh, applaud all those farmers here, the commercial farmers, the large scale farmers who are here today. And I want to take a special mention of Mr. Amrul Hussain, who uh, resides in Australia and uh, has decided to invest in Fiji. And she's a proud uh, uh, citizen, former citizen of Fiji. And I want to thank her for choosing to invest in Fiji. It's a, it's a large farmer, uh, big time, uh, and uh, it is a role model for all of us. Uh, we have Mr. Gulabdas, who have been you know, wanting to get into uh, commercial agriculture, have done a lot, uh, a really renowned citizen of Sabsabu, big time farmer, and you know, thank you Mr. Gulabdas to be here, and of course they all will be speaking here today. We've got other commercial farmers, Mr. Arthur Evans, Mr. Bart Simpson, and Mrs. Lady Simpson, Mr. Elisia uh, Tuina Kodati, Mr. Rogosiano Ranuka, Mr. Peter Wilson, Mr. Paul Burilambo, Mr. Jaypal Singh, Mr. Sarwan Singh, all of these, Mr. Nadarmel Lal, all of these are big time commercial farmers whom we will uh, assist, we will look after. But again, we will not pick up your operating cost. We want you to uh, take off, we will assist in the take off stage. And then you're on your own, we will then go and identify other commercial farmers. There are farmers who are there with large tracts of land but have no idea how to start off. We'll assist you to start off. We'll assist you in advising you what you, um, uh, what, what particular uh, agriculture that you need to get into. And one of the main concern of any business, any entrepreneur, in this case, we're talking about agriculture entrepreneur, is market. How will they sell their product? How will they find market? I want to tell you today that you don't have to worry about the market. We will get the market to you here, right to your farm gate. And that is not just you know, a statement. We will buy it. We will buy all your produce. We will buy all your produce, right from your farm gate. We will give you a price in advance. Of course, the price might be slightly less than what you will get if you go and outside yourself. But we don't want you to do whole, you know, get into transportation, look for market. No, you be an entrepreneur, agriculture entrepreneur. You don't be an exporter. Don't be a, don't get into transportation uh, business. We will get the market to you. We have with us here today Agriculture Marketing Authority, and we have also lined up a few exporters. But we have our agriculture marketing authority manager Raj here, uh, who is here. We will buy all your ingwana. We'll buy all your dal. We'll buy all your uh, cassava. We'll buy all your rice. Fiji uh, Rice Limited is working very closely with us. All those rice farmers, we want you. We're happy to give you rice seeds. Fourteen dollars for thirty kg. Fourteen dollars ten cents. Fourteen dollars ten cents. Fourteen dollars ten cents for thirty kg rice seed for the two new varieties that we have released. The two new Dangivo, Dangivo, and Sitara, high yielding variety of rice, short term, three months. But we want you certain conditions. We don't want to give out seeds to any Tom Dick and Harry for this and all uh, small scale farming. For that, you can go and plant whatever rice, rice variety you want to. You can harvest it as you will. You can you know, use it for your own consumption. But for commercial purpose, we'll give out the seeds at this low, highly subsidized price, as long as you would plant minimum of two crops. So three months, you can plant three crops per year. You'll make net 
net return of $800 per acre, $1,600 per acre in a year. We have two crops. I think it's $2,400 per acre if you have three crops. And you can. You can. This is not this is not uh, uh, irrigated uh, rice that we are talking about. It's a rain fed rice. It can grow year round. It can go year round. We will buy all your rice. You don't have to worry about where you're going to go and sell it. We'll buy it from here. We'll pick it up from here. So we'll get the market to you. We'll provide you with an enabling environment. We'll pick up the basic start off capital cost at subsidized rate. The rest you behave like a commercial entrepreneur. We're moving from a family farm run by a family farmer to a commercial farm run by an agriculture entrepreneur. That's the movement that is happening, and we want to teach, treat this agriculture sector as the economic backbone of this country. It's not a welfare ministry. It's not a ministry of social protection for rural dwellers. It is a ministry for economic, support economic growth agenda of this country. And I'll thank you all of you. And as I said, all the commercial farmers that we will have will be treated as a gold card farmer and we will provide them with the service and we'll write to them, write to them formally of this. And you will have direct contact to myself, including myself, PS, and our directors. I want to thank you, uh, Mr. Chen, thank you for coming all the way from Australia and all the other commercial farmers for taking over your time here. It's a pleasure today. It's a new era for the Indian agriculture sector. I wanted to um, hang in there. There will be small, small frustrations. Uh, you need to understand that you know, uh, mindset is same, and I'm battling the mindset within agriculture. Culture is, is, uh, is there. And we're changing it. And people are changing. They're responding, they're responsive. Uh, good people, good staff, good, uh, good directors. Uh, but we're trying to uh, have total, absolute control in the ministry so that you know everyone shares the same vision. It'll take time. It will take time, and for that, I will need to micromanage. Thank you. Naka. The United States, and the maximum it can take may be 100 tons a month, or 200 tons a month. We should bear in mind, because people... ...and subsistence farmers alike, and the least. I can see any around. Okay. Okay, Sama. South in the same project in Indonesia. We have to put our records. Ministry of Agriculture. Okay. When we sit down, we have the forms there. With me. We have a district school the nearest uh, primary school in that conference room when I display Hi, my name is Amir Ol Nisha Hussain and I'm the owner of this 130 acres of freehold land in Tuvrara and I'm 54 years of age. I have um, come back to reinvest in my country and I'm born Fiji citizen, I was educated by the New Zealand government and I'm an Australian citizen as well and I run my pharmacy business there that helped me fund this project here. I really like to run this on a commercial basis, planting Dalo and Yangona, and help the local community with jobs and have a better future. I was born and bred in Fiji and um, my father passed away when I was only 15. And we, I come from a very poor family and farming was our background and we were um, taught to work on the farm, plant sugarcane and harvest rice and help with my 11 other siblings 
with my mom and dad and so when my father passed away I had to work really hard and got a scholarship to go and study overseas but then I wanted to come back and help my family here and I knew if I stayed back here there wasn't enough money so I had to go back overseas to make more money to come back and invest that back in the country. I'm so pleased with the Ministry of Agriculture to be assisting me in this journey. Um, I was struggling a bit with the drainage and irrigation with my Dalo plantation. So when um, Dr. Mahendra Reddy offered to give me a hand with that, I was wrapped. So, which means to say that I'll be having all my um, nearly 30 acres of um, land closer to the river, all drainage done properly so that I can plant um, Dalo on, on commercial basis. I've planted already 23,000 of uh, Dalo suckers. I have got them from, sourced them from Tavuni and bought it from local farmers, the suckers. And I'm hoping that after this yield, I will have uh, in effect about 90,000 plants, suckers to plant. And after this drainage is done and done proper plotting, then I'll be able to sustain that on a long-term basis. I, I hope that we can all work together and assist each other with all our knowledge and expertise in whatever uh, plants that uh, crops the different farmers are planting so we can uh, better our yield and uh, weed out the small problems that each farmer is probably facing.